such type of uh, you know uh, talk uh, i can say this is not a talk it is a plenary lecture plenary lecture we call for such type of uh, lectures when are been given and i should thank uh, vigyan parishan that they are hosting it with a uh, uh, pc ray one week of celebration and one of the uh, plenary lecture in our college and the efforts taken by dr sapna uh, raitonde is also to be notable and along with her team members who are sitting here taking the concept of pc ray who has developed the chemistry i can say and yesterday was his birthday 2nd august and whole week will be celebrated as a pc ray week just to motivate the student how science has progressed and now today's lecture i keep i will be highlighting on his journey of life how he has promoted industry in india and is a first person from bengal okay who was to start pharmaceutical company in india so lots and many things are been done thereafter uh, after pc ray's uh, motivation and uh, his uh, site i can say for the development of chemistry and for the development of human beings and the society in general so i wish you a very happy session today and i welcome sir once again uh, to our college and i'm really really thankful that you accepted our invitation to be with us with a small virtual sitter and a beautiful day with my student thank you very much Good morning to you all. It gives me great pleasure to come to Khandala College because two three reasons. Number one, I not come to this college till today. It's my first visit to this college. Rest all colleges I have visited. Maybe Chowle, maybe Tempe, maybe BS, maybe also many things are there. I felt happy when my Vikyan Parsha told. Uh, by this year you must go to Khandala College. I said pleasure. Second is I was knowing that Madam Purna Kala is the principal here, so it's always a pleasure to meet old friends. She used to be in chemistry department, I used to be in zoology department. Of course, we met for so many activities, maybe conducting some exam, that one, this one. When you are in a setup, the department doesn't count. It's relation what counts there. Number three, why we have come here? Or say, why I have come here to meet young friends like you? Generally, they say teachers don't grow old because they are always with the young young students. And as uh, you mix with the young student, you also feel young, at least young at heart. Chronologically, you cannot change. I am what I am. My age is what my age is. But heartily speaking, I feel very happy to be with the students, mix with them, mingle with them, and understand. it's also an opportunity for me to have change is the constant thing of life so without giving any preaching or sermon i don't belong to that category directly coming to pc ray and his contribution question is why we have chosen pc ray why not others and why i nationally stand freedom fighter and all sort of thing and we'll talk about this particular thing as the we continue to hear okay all of us including me we are all post independent model none of us were born before 1948 47 when we got independence the question is what type of life they might have undergone for getting freedom to us for us it was ready made before we took birth we are a free citizen no no botheration at all and if you see you have also might have heard some history your teachers have told you history we talk about freedom struggle particularly for students can you identify these four fellows 1 2 3 4 4 yes no yes no who is this fantastic slightly louder please gentleman and this gentleman and can you identify these fellows
I am finding a silence here. May I know? Louder, please. Yes, you are right. It's Veer Savarkar. All of them, you can put them under one banner. They are all freedom fighters. Yes, no. But the way in which these fellows were fighting for freedom was different from the way in which these fellows were fighting for freedom. Some are called Naramdal, some are called Garamdal. These were the Garam, Naramdal persons. These were Garamdal persons. Do you think that we got independence just because of this Garam and Naramdal? Others did not work at all. Is it the freedom order we call? Sorry. Okay. Since we are from science, we would like to know what was the contribution of scientists for the freedom fighter. Before that, have they contributed anything for the science or sorry, freedom? Can you identify these persons? I consider them on par with Naramdal and Garamdal, but they did not go to the street. They did not say, hi, hi, hui, hui. Bharat Mata Ke Jai and all sorts of things. Janmashid Bhar, I mean, independence is my Janmashid Hak, Osap Chilaya nahi hai. But they have contributed in their own way for the freedom of our country. In a scientific way, they have contributed for the freedom of our country. Can you identify these gentlemen? Anyone of you? Today's talk is on him, he is Sir P.C. Ray. Can you identify this person? Are you from science? C.V. Raman? Who is the gentleman? You might have heard something called Bark. B-A-R-C, Mumbai. So you can identify him. Homi Baba, Homi Jahangir Baba, Atomic Energy. Can you identify this fellow? Satyendranath Bose, PCRA student, one of the great chemists, Mahindra of Sirkar, chemist of a high repute. Of course, he all and this gentleman, can you identify this gentleman? A great mathematician, I am simplifying, a great mathematician who lived only for 36 years on this globe. But even today, people are remembering his name. He is Ramanujan, S. Ramanujan, one of the top notch mathematicians. Even today, there is a book called Ramanujan's Lost Book, in which he has written the problem and given the answer. No one knows how we arrived to that particular answer. So, people have tried to work and see whether Ramanujan has what are the answer he got it right or wrong. This kind of great mathematicians, common thing, all of them were pre-independence and they worked independently. That too, without the support of the government. I don't know how many of you are aware, generally we say that why India did not get so many Nobel Prizes which were deserving. Answer is simple. Till 1947, we were under British rule and Britishers were the kingdom, the sun never sets in British Empire. That was the case. Very powerful. They did not allow any Indian to get Nobel. Despite that, a couple of fellows got it. A classic example is you might have heard uh, our uh, second president of India, Radha Krishnan, Sarvapalli Radha Krishnan, is considered as a, on the, his birthday we celebrate Teacher's Day. Can you believe a person who got nominated 23 times for Nobel did not get Nobel Prize? On the contrary, if you think of Americans, one president said, we are going to reduce the nuclear heads. Next year, he got Nobel Peace Prize. Nuclear heads were not reduced. Only he gave a statement that nuclear heads will be reduced along with the Gorbachev and this fellow 
got Nobel Prize. That is after that I lost interest. That if someone says that do you want Nobel, I'll say I don't know Nobel because you are not given Nobel to Radha Krishna and also. Even for that matter, Mahatma Gandhi, the non-violence method, what he used by following that method, more than 73 countries got independence. But the person who propagated or initiated non-violence and got independence to the country, he did not get Nobel Prize. What a pity it is to see. So when you talk about independence, please remember, other fellows have also contributed, not only the political parties or say politicians have contributed, others have also contributed in their own way. I think there may be poets who might have given, written a poem to struggle for the independence. The novel, novelist might have written novels leading to the people uh, creating awareness among them. And similarly, scientists have worked. Again, why we should remember these fellows? It, as I say, Winston Churchill was telling, a nation that forgets its past has no future. Unless you know the past, then you can sit there. <laughs> That's why we should remember these fellows' great service to the country. They contributed in a lot of ways. Coming to ancient scientists, I'm not going to spend much time because we are having a great history. Great uh, father of astronomy is considered as Aryabhata. Father of astrology is known as Varamira. Father of surgery is Charaka. First physician of the world is Shushulka. Next slide. Father of atomic energy, Rishi Kanad. Father of medicine. Father of architecture, Vishwakarma. Father of aerodynamics. Mayasura, father of Ganit or say mathematics is Bhaskara II, father of anatomy, Patanjali, father of alchemy or say chemistry is Nagarjuna. And what are the contributions of Indian scientists? I am talking about the ancient scientists, maybe one or two slides are there, then we will go to the pre independence model. Pingala Acharya, who invented zero, 200 BC, when people were, when Indians were in the scientific world, these fellows are hunters and gatherers. Western fellows were hunters and gatherers. But we had kingdom by that time and all sorts of things. Aryabhata, we talked about shape, size, skill of the earth. Please remember, even if you think of uh, Marquis Toth when you talk about, he has mentioned how far the sun is. And today, after we trust in NASA, after they calculated, the difference between whatever things have been de depicted in the um, Marthi Stoth and actual is only 340 kilometers. That is the preciseness they are having. Bhaskaracharya explained the gravity, but we talk about Newton. Bhaskaracharya 2, differential calculus. Calculus happens to be my enemy. That's why I joined zoology, not mathematics. Maharshi Kanad, I told, atomic Varamir, I told. And very important is polymath. What do you mean by polymath? The person who is expert in more than one field is known as polymath. For example, if you think of, let us say, uh, Aristotle, one of the great uh, polymath, there is no subject which you have not touched. From ancient, we are moving to pre-independence. Let us see who are the great scientists. Again, polymath, I need not tell you what is the meaning of polymath. The person who is expert in more than one field is known as polymath. Homi Baba, picture you have seen already, photograph you have seen, nuclear physics. C. V. Raman, physics, got the Nobel Prize also. Meghna Sa, physics and maths. Satyendranath Bose, happens to be Prabhupada Chandra Ray's student, maths and physics. Sisit Kumar Mitra, physics and wireless science. Today we talk about wireless science, but in India, wireless science was developed by Sisit Kumar Ray. Srinivas Ramanujan, as I told you, person who survived only for 36 years, made a name in the all in, I mean, the world, in the world as far as the great mathematician is concerned. Prashant Mahalobius, statistician, one of the great statistician, UN Brahmachari, those days the Kala Azar or black fever, what they used to call, it was very rampant. He was the person who invented or discovered medicine for 
black plague. Thousands of people used to die. This UN Brahmachari treatment for Kala Azar, particularly Bihar, UP, that belt, this was very uh, prevalent. Shantanath Ray, one of the great doctor, particularly pathologist, pathologist tried to see what are the pathogens which are causing problem for any kind of medical uh, devices are there. Colonel Ramna Chopra, again considered as pharmacologist, one of the great pharmacologists, but basically a defense fellow, army fellow, army colonel. Mahindrala Sirkar, he is a great hybrid type of scientist. He was basically allopathic, allopathy doctor. Then he started falling in love with homeopathy. And later he developed a hybrid type of treatment. And he, whatever the good things are there in homeopathy, he used to make, make use in the allopathy also. And use the allopathy as well as a rare combination, I should say. And coming to E.R. Sheshadri, again South Indian from Karnataka. A great chemist. Shanti Sarup Bhatnagar. I am sure at least some of the uh, our teachers must be aware. We say it's a Bhatnagar Award. Today we CSR gives Bhatnagar Award, which is the highest award any scientist can get in India. It is considered on par with Indian Nobel Prize. Indian Nobel Prize. This is the you can understand why it has come into his name by his name because he was a CSR director plus. He was a great chemist, that's why the award is named after Shanti Sarup, S.S. Patnagar Award. It's a, in, I think in Goa, there are only two fellows, if I'm not wrong. One is a former Vice Chancellor of uh, Goa University, who was the director of NIO also. He was a Patnagar Award winner. And I don't know, one more fellow person from NIO over there. But in Goa University, there are no Patnagar Award winners. Let me make it very clear. Let me make it very clear. Birbal Sani, Paleobotany, Paleobotany matlab, ancient botany, and Panchanan Maheshwari, actual botany, though it is Panchanan Maheshwari, he is a man, generally people confuse this Panchanan Maheshwari, thinking that last Maheshwari is there, they think that it's a lady, it's not lady, it's a man. Suran Sundarlal Hora, ichthyology, at least zoologists should know it, it's a fish, study of fishes is known as ichthyology. Benjamin Perry Paul, geneticist and plant builder, he was one of the person who is responsible for creating varieties of plant rad, rad, and paddy today. I don't know whether you are aware or not, when we got independence in 1947, our population was hardly 35 crore. And we used to import food, we used to beg for food with Americans, Baba, Khana Dedo, and they used to give us wheat. And as a student of uh, elementary class, I had the privilege in inverted commas to have a midday meal which was from the wheat supplied by the Americans under PL 480. That was a very critical condition and a lot of Bengal famine and all sorts of things happened. But in 1960, early 60s, IARI, they went for hybridization of the paddy and wheat particularly. Please remember in India, there is a distinct differentiation. North Indians, wheat consumers, South Indians, we eat mostly rice. So rice and paddy, uh, sorry, rice and wheat are two important things. So the IRI went for breeds for production in uh, increasing the productivity of the wheat and the rice. One of the most popular rice variety was IR8 those days. Very, very uh, productive. What they did was earlier paddy used to grow up to 5 feet, 6 feet and then it used to give the grains, come to reproductive stage. This fellows cut down the vegetative growth, IR8 was only a one and a half foot height but used to give more, uh, more crops and more grains. Thanks to these fellows for the green revolution, today with 135 crore we should feel happy and pull our collar because today India is exporting food. From the time of importing food with the only 35 pop crore population, today with 130 crore population, we are exporting food. But please keep in mind, area under agriculture has not increased. Area under agriculture is not increased. On the contrary, it is decreased. Even in Marcella for that matter, anywhere you can see, agriculture land is coming, becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. But productivity is increased. How is it possible? They are not gone for horizontal growth. On the contrary, they have gone for the vertical growth. 
per unit square, square unit area productivity has drastically increased. That's how we are thinking. So this is the, some of the great plant breeder who have worked for the freedom. This is nothing but freedom of hunger, freedom from hunger. J. N. Wadia, geologist, glaciologist. Today there is a great institute is there. J. D. N. Wadia School of Himalayan Glaciology. Premnath Bose, geologist, person who worked on to measure the height of Mount Everest. We give the name of Mount Everest, but please remember, Mr. Everest never did any work. He was the surveyor general of the uh, geology, and someone Indians have worked, and they gave the name of Mr. Everest, who never did anything about that. That is how ants build the nest, and snakes live in that. That is the proverb what we are having. Next slide. M. Vishweshwaraya, great engineer. His birthday is celebrated as engineers. Engineers Day today, I mean today we are celebrating his birthday, May 15th as Engineers Day from Karnataka. I think you might have gone to Mysore, at least many, some of you might have gone. You might have seen that the KRS Dam. That KRS Dam was constructed more than 100 years ago. There was no ACC cement, there was no LNT cement, there was no high density, all kind of things were not there. With the molten Chuna and in God, Chuna and in God. With that, they constructed the dam. Even after 100 years, it is standing without leaking anywhere. That was the engineering skill. He was the person who did a lot of work for that matter. For your kind information, in the whole of India, first electricity came in Mysore Kingdom and it was his idea. Jog Falls, you might have heard. Jog Falls, you might have heard. When he saw the falls, he told, what a waste. Then asked, what's the waste? This water is being wasted. No, we can use it for something. We can electricity generation. We generated that electricity. And Jian Ramchandra, one of the great biophysicists, and uh, Biresh Chandra Goha, biochemistry, M. K. Vaini Papu, we talk about the astronomy. Please remember, it's not astrology, it's astronomy. And coming to our Goa, D.D. Kosambi, great mathematician of, uh, from uh, Goa before independence. And today, government of Goa is celebrating DD Kosambi uh, week. Lecture talk series will be there. And that's why these were the so many fellows are there. It's not possible for anyone to talk on all these fellows in a day or two or week or something like that. So today we have selected uh, Professor Chandra Ray for today's talk. Again, question why? Because uh, as a student, one of the best way to learn any subject is by questioning. According to me, the student who questions is a good student. The, the student who doesn't question anything and keeps at the, I mean, sits at the last bench, he is not a good student. I don't know whether your teachers are allowing you to ask questions. I believe questions is a must. For example, if I want to know about this gentleman, what I should do? What I should do to know you? Question. First question start with what's your name, where are you from, what are you doing. So as I ask more and more questions, I'll be knowing this gentleman more and more. Similarly, subject is also like that. Ask more questions, you will come to know more subject. Don't be under impression that if I don't ask question, I'll be a good student. No. You'll be a bad student. Ask question. So again, as I told you, 2nd August happens to be his birthday. We are celebrating his uh, celebration. Again, again, why Prapulla Chandra Ray, what is speciality about his? Let us know his biography for this first time. Then we we'll talk about his contribution and other things. Are. Next slide. Acharya Sir Prapul Chandra Ray is a uh, order of uh, M Empire. Tapanai, and this is the was an eminent Indian chemist, educationist, historian, industrialist, and philanthropist. See, so many superlatives are given there. Each one of them has its own meaning. Of course, he was a great chemist, educationist, he was a teacher, historian, he was industrialist, and philanthropist doing good for the human beings. What good he has done for human beings? If I ask you, uh, can you remember, let us say, uh, naphthalene balls, uh, phenyl, uh, or a hand washer as a detergent? Are they rare chemicals or very common chemicals? Rare chemicals or common chemicals? 
now they are common. Before Prafulla Chandra Ray started his Bengal chemical, can you believe India used to import naphthalene balls from abroad, phenyl from abroad, and this was our condition. Today, on the roadside, they send the phenyl naphthalene balls costing some 10 rupees or 15 rupees, that's the end of it. So, from where we have reached which condition? Thanks to Professor Chandra Ray, I'll talk about that later stage. He established first modern Indian research school in chemistry and is regarded as father of chemical science in India. What kind of chemistry he did? When you say chemistry, it may be organic, it may be inorganic, it may be analytical, so many things, structural chemistry, all things are there. Now, when you talk about Acharya Professor Chandra Ray, next slide please. He established first modern, this I told already, next slide. He was a teacher, preacher, and also reformer. Why we call reformer? Because he created reforms in the Indian chemical industry. Today we use sulfuric acid left, right, and center in the lab. Is it a rare chemical or it is a commonly available chemical? Please keep in mind, it was Sir Prapulachand Ray who started producing sulfuric acid in our country for the first time. Uska pehle, we never used to produce manufacture uh, sulfuric acid, we used to import it. I am giving one more example how Prof. Chandra Ray was doing. You are further in chemistry, chemical education and Indian pharma industry. When you talk about the pharma industry, today we pull collar and say we are number two in the world as far as the bulk pharma production is concerned. Goa is no way inferior as far as the pharma industry is concerned. Most of you must be aware. We are having a CIPLA, we are having a Sanofi, we are having so many chemical, so many uh, Merck is there, a lot of chemical industries are there, Pharma I mean pharmaceutical industries are there. But still, Bengal Chemical started producing pharmace pharmaceuticals. We had no factory or no firm which was producing pharmaceuticals in our country. Even a cough syrup used to be uh, imported from abroad. Cough syrup. Nowadays we get cough syrup left hand right and there is no problem about that. And as I told you, today we are number two as far as the pharmacology or say pharmacy is concerned. We produce large, large, second largest producer of the world. First happens to be the, I think Germany is the first chemical pharma industry. Next comes India. Next slide. Coming to his family background, biography. It's all known. He was not born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Like most of us, he was born to a middle class family. He was born in really a Kaipara village. Today, Jasur is in Bangladesh today. Earlier time it was in the, I mean, uh, East Bengal. Today it is in Jasur, it's in uh, Bangladesh. He was the third child of son and Zamindar, Harish Chandra Rai Choudhury and Baban Mohini Devi, father's and mother's name. Ray was the one of the seven siblings, having four brothers and two sisters. Earlier time, family was full-fledged. Nowadays, people ask, you are having two children? Big question mark. Two children, big family. Many times, most of the people are think, I think you must know that, double income, no kid. Both husband and wife are earning, no kid. Generally, in a colloquial, in a, I mean, a lighter language, they say it's think family. He was influenced by Brahma Samaj, a social reforming thing, Brahma Samaj. He had his education in higher school in Calcutta, because in uh, Jasur there are no good school, so his father sent him to Calcutta. From there he went to the Albert School in the Calcutta for your uh, higher secondary, I'm sorry, higher secondary, yeah, higher secondary. Vidyasagar College, he did his BA. Please remember, those days there was no BA, B, there was no BCom, BSc, BWOC, nothing of that sort. Everything was known as BA, BA Chemistry, BA History, BA Economics, BA Commerce, like that. BA was the Bachelor of Arts, and different subjects were under that. Even Masters for Law, so like that, only MA, MA Chemistry, MA. Nowadays, people may give a smile. What man, this fellow is saying MA Chemistry, it should be MSc Chemistry. So that was the style. And from there, Vidyasagar College, he went to Edinburgh in 1980, 1882. 
and he completed a DSC in 1887. And uh, since his uh, dissertation was rejected as the best uh, dissertation, he was given one year extension to stay in Edinburgh under the name of Pope Fries for postdoctoral studies. This was the award what he got for being the best, this one. And uh, he became the vice president of Edinburgh University Chemical Society also. And it was a rare occasion. The Indian, where the India was under British rule, is becoming vice president of Edinburgh University, something great. That is what his achievements are. He studied chemistry under Alexander Tom Brown, one of the great figures in the chemistry those days. He did his BSc in 1885. This was in Edinburgh, not in India. India may everything was BA. He had interest in history and political science, but in 1885, as I told you, was the best prize. But what was his essay? See the guts what he had. He had written an essay in Edinburgh about India before and after beauty. I am sure all of you are aware, in 1857, we had Sipai mutiny. Hope you remember that one of the first independent movement is known as Sipai mutiny. It started in 1857. And he wrote India before and after sitting in Edinburgh, writing something against the Britishers. But you must appreciate their magnanimity also. They did not throw these uh, things away. On the contrary, they went by the quality of the essay and they awarded the first, first prize for this one. As a result, he won the best prize for this one. And he also explored the specific nature of structural affinities of double salts. Uh, PCD is known for double salts. Most of you are chemistry here. Chemistry. All, are, all of you are from chemistry. What do you mean by double salts? I will not caution you because it may, it may take some time. <laughs> he was awarded the Hope Prize as I told you for his doctorate. Then he did his doctorate. His thesis was conjugated sulfates of the copper magnesium group, a study of isomorphous mixture and molecular combination. Here the interest was, he was interested in so his teacher was organic chemist, that Crumb was organic chemist fellow, but this fellow was interested in inorganic. But relation does not matter whether your teacher is organic fellow and you love or inorganic, but teacher supported him, okay you do inorganic, this is the uh, PhD what he had, next slide. And uh, after coming back to back from Edinburgh, he was uh, unemployed. See the our condition. A PhD from Edinburgh and he did not want, he would have continued there and had a beautiful life, probably married some British women also and had a life like, and um, much entertaining life there. But he wanted to come back to India and serve the country. This is the nationalistic feeling. Nationalistic doesn't mean that you should not go abroad, you should not work there. You may be whatever you may be, but in heart you must have real love and affection, affection and affinity for the country. That is the real uh, this one. If you go abroad, you cannot. No, no, no. He is not a nationalist. He is gone abroad and doing PhD there. No. So when you talk about he had undergone due to supervision by the British, PCD was staunch nationalist who had observed the deterioration of the Indian society under the Britishers because Britishers used to treat us like a second class citizens. And there are some comments are very nasty comments. Britisher did tell that Indians are not good for doing any science. They are not fit to do science. And because of the Macaulay way of system, education system, our ethos, our values, our uh, humanity, everything gone down the drain. Because they say, if you want to spoil a person, spoil his ethos, spoil his beliefs, spoil his image, that's enough. It. To spoil the education, society will get spoiled. That's exactly they did. He was sympathetic towards the revolutionaries and would make arrangements for his shelter and food for his factories. Actually, one of the story goes like this. In Bengal, there are many... Uh, Fairies are there, like what fairy we are having, Kumarjua fairy, that fairy, this fairy we are having. All fairies were belonging to Britishers and only one fairy used to be managed by PC race 
I think, uncle. Then these Britishers come because they wanted to have monopoly. They come to Pitsirai's uncle and tell that, why don't you give that ferry to us? We will run the show. And you will give money for that. You, why you, why you want to do? You are only one. Then this Pitsirai's uncle told you since, why don't you give all the ferries to us Indians? We will run it. It is our water. It is our ferry. And we are transferring our fellows. And we are serving our fellows. Why you should do it? We will do it. This is the nationalistic feeling. What kind of thing they are having. Despite being only one ferry he had. But he had a guts to talk to British officer and say that. Why you are coming here? Why you want to? You are just, it's our place. We will take care of it. So when you talk about this kind of PC race, that's shelter and food for his factories. Next slide. As I told you, he came back in 1888 from Edinburgh. Till 1989, he was unemployed. So please don't uh, feel bad if you don't get job immediately after BSc. Again, story is beautiful. Presidency College was run by the Britishers. This fellow had a PhD from Edinburgh. They could not reject him. Qualification is there. But they discriminated by giving only one third of the salary what they used to give to the Britishers. Then Prabhupada Chandra Ray, he told, I am not going to accept your salary if you are paying me this much. But I am going to continue Aston Professor Post. Aston, Aston uh, Professor Post. Because I love my students. And there was a heavy demand for this course. That's why they could not terminate this fellow. It went on for one year, two years, three years. See the resistance power. The ordinary people like me or you might have broken the heart and power for them. Whatever things I am getting, let me get it. No. When you are having stick to the principle, he stuck to the principle for nearly three years, then British have realized they are not going to leave the So what to do? If you can't, uh, leave them, you join him and ultimately after three years they gave him full scale not a single paisa more than what Britishers they used to pay to Britishers but they paid equal salary to the Britishers but this fellow was no way inferior whatever the arrears he got three years salary whatever the arrears he got he donated to the college to develop a chemical chemistry lab they were shocked not a single Britisher had given even one penny for the college, for the development, this fellow is with much difficulties he got it. He did not take the money. He told to the college, I am giving money to them. We start a chemistry lab here. So this kind of attitude you are having. Later in 1911, he became full professor. And he served up to 1936 as a uh, professor emeritus and also a professor. He became 1944. He expired in 1944. Till then, he was a senior professor in there, emeritus. That's his career. Next slide. PCRI is known for mainly for five four five items or four or five points. Number one, discoveries in uh, chemistry. I think you know the difference between search, research, uh, invention, innovation, and discovery. I'm using using five words: search, research, invention, innovation and discovery. I am not going to spend my time over that to explain each and every word. But discovery in chemistry was his contribution. Number two, he wrote a book on history of Hindu chemistry. Please remember, Hindu doesn't mean that uh, uh, our religious Hindu here. It's an Indian chemistry or say ancient Indian chemistry. What kind of thing chemistry are there? All those things he wrote. Book on that. That was one of the greatest book. If at all you want to know what chemistry uh, things used to happen in our country, you must read this book. And he established Bengal Chemicals and Pharmaceutical for the first time in India, a chemical and pharmaceutical company was started. Today they are producing about 185 items under Bengal Chemicals. Right from naphthalene balls, sulfuric acid, and uh, I'll talk about that. And he also created he is known for creating young chemists known as nursery from which the research of New India started. He gave support for the young students to do research in chemistry. 
Next slide. He founded Bengal Teachers Association. Of course, all Bengalis are known to be revolutionary. This fellow was also revolutionary, but sometimes Britishers, at one time, Britishers told PCLA is a uh, revolutionary in the garb of a scientist. They can never scientist, hai, but under under revolutionary, but they could not prove it. Again, why they were of that opinion? There's also a reason for that. I'll let you know later. As I told you, donated his salary and honorarium for the development of chemistry department. Next slide. Chemical exam, he contributed to chemical examination of food. Indian food testing ka starting kiya hai, PC Rene. Till then, we are not in a position to test the food. We had no test kits today. Today, food testing is very easy. There are very chemicals. He invented major contribution by PCR is invented mercurous nitrite. He is known as nitrite person. Again, nitrite and ammonium nitrite and alkyl ammonium nitrites, these are used for explosives. Explosives. Any nitrite is used for explosives. So whatever the Britishers thought that this fellow is a teacher in the garb of a, I mean, a revolution in the garb of a uh, scientist was not wrong because he invented this one and he passed on this information for the actual revolution there is. So rest of the things you can understand. They started using explosion all sorts of things. Root cause was from him because he was the person who invented this mercurous nitrite. Investigated mercury, gold, platinum, and other amines. Published more than 200 research papers. Next slide. He was the founder of Bengal Chemicals, as I told you, India's first pharmaceutical company. This can be a GK question. Maybe in IAS, maybe civil service, any kind of first Indian chemical factory. He prepared, very important, he always used to keep in mind the poor fellows of our country. He produced the chemicals or pharmaceuticals which are affordable for the poor fellows. As I told you, cough syrup used to be imported, then he used the olives and other locally available plants from where our grandmothers used to give us at, uh, this one at a small child. That he implemented and today they are producing a large number of herbal medicines, cheap medicines, but very effective, but there are no secondary effect on the body. That's really important. He prepared chemical easily available raw materials, used drugs and fertilizer in this next slide. He produced painkillers. You see the diversity. As I told you, 135, around 135. He used the painkillers, glandular products, vaccine serum, strychnine. Strychnine is used for, uh, it's a poison, actually, it's a poison, neuropoison it is. Ephedrine, tonics, and other things. Coming to household type of chemicals. He produced soaps, cosmetics, printing inks, inorganic acids, dichromate, permanganate, fire extinguisher, and sterilized cotton, etc which are used for day-to-day -day life. This is the production of Bengal chemicals. Today, as I told you, they are having more than 150 products are there, of which four classifications they did, pharmaceutical tablets, antiseptic ones, cough syrup, multivitamin syrup. Next slide. Industrial chemi chemicals like alum, bleaching powder. You may be surprised, before Bengal chemical came into picture, even bleaching powder used to be imported. From where we have started and where we are ending, and all the root cause because starting is very important. Starting is important. This one pharmaceutical analgesic, antipyretic, antimicrobial, antibiotic, anti TB. Those days TB was very prominent. Now TB is a Maya Hatka Kaja. Dots are available now. Pop in, uh, pop in your uh, dots tablet. Maybe for six months, you are 100% free from TB. TB is not a detrimental, uh, dangerous disease now. But unfortunately, even today in India, TB is there. TB is there. Home products like toiletries, disinfectant, as I told you, phenyl, naphthalin, box. Next slide. He was a Bengali chemist, educator, and all sorts of fellows. Royal Society of Chemistry honored his work by landmark plague was I mean, established in the outside the Europe. Satyanath Bose and Meghna Saab were his students. He authored, as I told you, Hindu chemistry. 
earliest time to 1902 from early chemistry to the 1902 he told about what are uh, contribution Indians have done for the chemistry. He contributed articles in he was interested in to have the propagate the science in local language. Local language that was the Bengali there. So he started writing in Bengalis monthly magazines, particularly scientific topics. One of the very interesting thing what you can think of is writing scientific articles in local Konkani or Marathi so that general public also will come to know what kind of things are happening. Next slide. What kind of, of course, when you work, recognition will come automatically. They say don't chase the awards. Awards, will, awards should chase you. This is the beauty of the things. He was Padma Bhushan in 1963. He got Curzon Prize, William Bederburn Prize, Insa Meghnath Sa Medal, ICS Achar Chandra Prakundare Medal, ICS Achar Nanindra Ghosh Medal. Next slide. And uh, Faraday Gold Medal for University of Edinburgh gave him Faraday to Gold Medal. Companion of Order of Indian Empire, CIE, by the Britishers, 1912. And he also he was Knight Bachelor. That's why he was called from that time. He, start, he was started calling as Sir. Sir prefix comes only after you get that one. He was a fellow of so many academic prizes are there. Royal Asiatic Society, Bengal, uh, Bengal Society Chemistry, honorary member of Dash Academic Foundation of the National Institute of Science in the India, fellow of the Indian Association of Culture. Today it's very popular one, ISCA they call it. Is. They conduct a science congress every year. You may be surprised, still today they have conducted 107 or 108 science congresses Every year they conduct more than 10,000 scientists will be gathering a big kumbh mela of scientists. You can uh, really enjoy this one. Uh, back in I think 93 or 92 we had a science congress in Goa also. So this is the your general president of ISCA, already fellow of as I told you, Dutch Academy from German, founder of the Indian Chemist Society, president of National Education Board, principal president of Bangla Sahit Sammelan, very good Bengali writer. President of Bangla Science Parishat also. Next slide. Coming to honorary doctorates, we get uh, we will be tired to get one degree, one doctorate. Pura le baba majda le research le kaba. Once you get a PhD degree, most of the people feel that enough. Now let me take rest. But this fellow got honorary PhD from Kolkata, honorary DSC from Durham University, Banaras Hindu University, University of Dhaka, University of Allahabad. Andhra University, Osmani University, Delhi University, you can understand how many universities have conferred their doctoral degree on him. This is his greatness. He was felicitated by the Corporation of Calcutta in 70th birthday as well as 80th birthday. Felicitated by the Corporation of Karachi, 1933. By that time, India was one. There was no Pakistan at all. He was, he was given the title of Janabharti from the Koroshia College of Managing man from uh, Calcutta again. Chemical landmark plaque of Royal Society of Chemistry first to be situated outside Europe that was situated in India. Today outside Bengal Chemical they are having the plaque of uh, this uh, Royal Society of Chemistry. And Indian filmmaker Harisadan Das Gupta made Acharya Purple General documentary on him. So you can understand if you think of let us and you are always compared with my Goa University. We are there for the last so many years, but not a single person has taken any documentary on any teacher uh, of the Goa University. And I was there for the last 60 years. I have not seen anyone taking any or imagining or thinking to take a uh, make a documentary on any scientist of NIO. Similarly with uh, ICR and other things. So understand where are we and where was he? That is the difference between it. Next slide. Indian postage also res I mean, respected him, honored him by taking the postage stamp. They have taken the stamp, uh, Prabhupada Ray at the young stage. And his famous quote was that science can wait, Swaraj cannot. That is the famous quote by uh, Prabhupada Ray. So he was telling that Swaraj is a must, science can wait. And it was his, this is signature. And as I told you, in the Bits Museum, Kolkata, there is a bus stop. Proposition the red, the Bitla Institute of Technology, they are having a museum in Calcutta. This is the bust of uh, Calcutta, I mean, uh, the Proposition the red. Next slide. 
Thank you. Have a nice day. I think I have taken nearly one hour. Thank you. Have a nice day. for such an interesting talk. Uh, it was very interesting, isn't it? We become so much aware of uh, contribution of uh, Sir Prabhupada Chandrade, which we never go to Google and ask, isn't it? Anybody has anything to ask, sir? MSc students, you have something to ask? The most interesting part of the talk was stories, <laughs> isn't it? We became so much aware of the contribution done by the scientist. You all go to Google and search for it anytime? No. Don't go to Google. I'm going to leave you a, uh, a small movie on Prabhupada Chandra Ray. It's about 20 minutes documentary, Prabhupada Chandra Ray documentary is there. I'm going to leave it on your computer so that whenever you are having time, you can watch it. Because I don't want to put a movie and keep quiet for 20 minutes. Being a professional teacher, keeping quiet is the most difficult thing for a teacher. And they cannot sit also. If they sit, they can't talk. So this is uh, what I'm going to do. You just have a look at the uh, Prabhupada Chandra's movie. I'm going to leave it on your uh, computer here system. Okay? Whenever you are free, you can have a watch. You can watch. Thank you. Have a nice day. Now I request our principal to present a small token of appreciation to the resource person. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request Dr. Sapna Rai Bande to propose vote of thanks. Respected Professor I. K. Bai, Honorable Speaker of today's lecture, Professor Purnakala Samant, Principal Madam, and my colleagues, and my dear students, good afternoon to you all. I feel honored to propose this vote of thanks on behalf of Government College Kandoda. We all are happy for giving us an opportunity to be a part of this lecture series that is held to celebrate C, uh, Sir P. C. Ray Birthday Anniversary Week by Vidyan Parishad. We are grateful to our resource person, Professor Pai, for sparing this valuable time for us and gracing this occasion. A big thank you to you, sir, for providing so much value to our students here, and we all are inspired by your words. 
uh, as a teacher i think uh, we all need to start uh, knowing the pioneers of any of the subject which uh, is a big gap that we have and today i have also come to realize how much uh, the founder people have done this i must uh, mention a uh, a deep sense of appreciation to principal madam for instantly agreeing to hold this talk uh, in the best interest of our staff and students i am immensely thankful to dr apurva for her efforts towards today's program i also and thanks to ms aditi chetkar for helping us to live stream this talk and uh, i would also like to thank dr sushma desai for uh, helping us uh, last minute for photography and uh, yes my sincere thanks to all the students here uh, and uh, feelings of gratitude i would uh, like to take your leave thank you it's pleasure to place on records my sincere thanks to government college kandala respected madam my colleague professor purnakala madam for full cooperation and of course gaitonda madam gaitonda madam is a part of vigyan parishad so i consider that she is playing dual role college ka bhi vigyan parishad ka bhi and of course madam has helped us big thanks to students it's lunch time i think you must be hungry i think academically i could feel your brains now physically you have to feel your tummies thank you have a nice day students uh, i would request more 2 minutes of you all we can gather outside for a photo <laughs>